Hi, it's Drew at Finale Fireworks. In this video, I'm going to do a fun project using the effect editor in Finale 3D to create a multi-style ghosting effect based on a shell recently published at Facebook by uh, St. Mary's Fireworks Factory. Let's jump right in. Uh, first, let's take a look at the finished simulation, which I've already created, and then I'll demonstrate how to create the effect. So I'll just go ahead and play a show. So there's our shell, and that's what we're trying to create. So the first step is I'll do Control G to bring up the effects dialog, the create effect dialog, and then I'll do uh, five inch because that's the size I would like to have. If you'd like to have a different size for this effect, feel free to enter a different caliber here. So this this demo is going to be based on a five inch shell. So then I'll just do blue to white ghost ring, and this will be our starter effect. I'll go ahead and just save that to my effects. And let's go ahead and add that to the show so we can preview what that looks like. Let's go with that and watch. Okay, so obviously very different from our finished effect. This is the effect we're going for, and right now this is the effect that we have. So quite a bit of adjustment needs to be made, and to do that we'll go ahead and jump into the effect editor. So I'll right click on the effect, customize this effect simulations parameters, and that will load up the effect in the effect editor. So here we are. The first thing I want to do is position myself, or I should say the camera viewpoint, at a spot where I can more easily see the effect. And I'll just make it easier to see the changes that are happening as I adjust the parameters of the effect. So we'll be able to see those changes in real time. So when I make a change over here on the effect in the effect editor, um, when I adjust a parameter, Keep your eyes on the simulation, you'll see it changing as we make those adjustments. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, locate the brake and the pedal. Right now we have a single pedal that's right here that represents the ring. I'm going to go into that um, pedal, so I'll click edit, and then I'm going to increase the number of stars in this ring to 100. And uh, then the next thing I'll do is change the, the ghost argument. The ghost argument controls the motion that's used um, or the way that the stars transition. Uh, and so I'll just adjust that ghost argument uh, to get a better result. You can experiment with this by, by adjusting the slider or changing the number to see the different things. I already know that for this effect I want to go with a 1.5. So without getting into a lot of detail about the difference between 0 and 1 and 1.5, the best thing is just to experiment with it until you get, to get something that you like. The next thing I notice uh, about the effect is that it has this dark phase. So here we have the stars are dark before we get the blue and then ultimately the white. So for our shell in this example, I don't care about the dark phase. I would like to remove it. So underneath the petal here, I see the star definition. I see three phases, the dark phase, the blue phase, and the white phase. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the dark uh, phase. And now we have the blue to white. If we take a look at this, now it goes straight to blue from burst, and then we have the white ghosting. So that's looking a lot better. The next thing I'd like to do is change the star duration. So we'll go ahead and drop this down to three seconds to get the look we're going for. And then I'd like to adjust the relationship of the timing of the phases. So I'll go ahead and close the, uh, the uh, duration definition. We're good with that. I'm going to go ahead and pop open the properties for each of the star phases. Here we can see we have, um, as you may remember, we, you know, we just set the duration to three seconds. So that's our, our reference. And um, at this moment, it's a 50-50 split. So we have one and a half seconds of blue and then one and a half seconds of white. And I want to change that to get the look we're going for. And the way I'm going to do that is by turning up this guy to 90 and this guy to 10. So now we have 90% of the time we're blue and 10% of the time we are white. So 2.7 seconds to 0.3 seconds. So now if you take a look at the ghosting, as I scrub through the effect, you see we have a blue ring that develops from burst, and then we get that white segment of ghosting traveling around. So we're starting to get the look that we're going for. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing I'd like to do is adjust the stars themselves. So I'll go ahead and close down those phases, because we're good there, and I'll go into the blue tip, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the tip size to three millimeters, and that will reduce the brightness and the size of the blue stars. Then I'll go into the white, 
and I'll adjust the size to 10 millimeters to really dial up the size of those stars and then also adjust the intensity and I'll make that 8. So as you can see here now we've got a sort of a dim blue ring with smaller stars and then we've got a really bright sort of magnesium bright mag bright white color here that comes out. Now we're getting really the look that we're going for. So our one ring is pretty good. It's in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is to make the donut effect as opposed to a single ring, I'm going to go ahead and clone this ring a couple times. So let's go ahead and close down our properties just to keep our workspace clean. And then I'll just go ahead and go to the actions menu and copy this to clipboard. So now we have this petal on the clipboard, including everything underneath it. And I'll go back up to the parent node, which is the break, and I'll add another petal. So now we have two rings, two petals, and I'll go ahead and do that one more time to get three. All right, so now you can see that the petals are not facing the same direction. So I'm going to pop open the petal properties for each of the petals. And what you'll notice on the first petal, which is the ring we worked on first, is that the random group ID is zero. And the random group ID for the second and third petals is two and three respectively. To get the rings to line up perfectly, we want to set all the group IDs to be the same. So I'll just change the group IDs for the second and third rings to be zero. And now all three rings are perfectly on top of each other. So now it looks like one ring again because they're perfectly on top of one each other. Um, what we'll do next, and you'll be able to see the rings more easily, is we'll adjust the petal width, so the size of the ring. So the first one has a petal, a total petal width at its maximum of 153.6 meters. We'll just go ahead and shrink the second and third petals down a little bit. So I'll change this one to 147, and I'll change the third one to 144. So now you can see that donut shape starting to form, but it still looks a little bit too even, so we need to do a little bit more work. You will remember that our effect that we're trying to create ghosts from three points. So that's the next thing I'll do. I'll adjust the heading, and I'll go up here and we'll explain what this is. So here, if I adjust the heading of our second petal, you'll see as I drag this slider, that I'm actually spinning one of those rings around. And what we'd like the shell to do is to uh, ghost from three even points around the ring. So I'll go ahead and adjust this to 120. With 360 degrees in a circle, 120 is a third of the way around. And for our third circle, I'll go ahead and adjust the heading to 240. And now we have the rings rotated around equally to have those three spots where the ghosting is going to start. So if we take a look at that, it looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do is to add a little bit more randomness to give that donut effect that's common in multi-cylinder shells. So I will dial up the tolerance on the pedal width, which controls how scattered the stars will be, to 9%. So we're adding a little bit more randomness, and that will kind of blend the rings together and give the impression that we don't have three rings, but we have one donut of stars. And there it is. So at this point, our outer ring is done, and all that we have left to do is the inner pistol. So I'll go ahead and close down the properties for these petals. And to create our inner pistol, I'll start by copying one of our outer rings. So I'll just copy node to clipboard. And then I'll go back up to the break, and I'll go ahead and add petal from clipboard. So now we have a fourth ring and we're going to turn this one into our pistol. So I'll minimize or actually close these uh, petals just to condense the tree a little bit and make it a little bit easier to work. All right, so just like the other three rings, we need to go ahead and adjust the group ID to get this ring that's going to end up being our pistol in line with the outer rings. So I'll change the group ID to zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust the pedal width down to 75 meters, which is much smaller, and that'll go ahead and represent our pistol. I'm going to dial up, instead of um, coming back later, I'm going to just dial up the tolerance now to really give a good spread on those stars and make a donut in the middle as well. And then I also know that I want my ghost argument to be a little bit different, so I'm going to adjust that to 1.6. Coming down to the star definition, I'm going to change the duration to two seconds. As a pistol, the stars are going to burn off for less time, and so I'm going to adjust that down to two seconds. I'll go ahead and slide the simulation back here so we can see how it looks, and that's starting to look pretty good. 
The next thing I want to do is kind of widen out the section that ghosts, so the number of segments is is not quite right. So you know I'd like to have more stars appearing in the ghosting segment at a time. So I'm going to change the phases or the the ratio of time from blue to what will eventually be the red, since our inner petal petal is going to be um, our inner ring is going to be blue to red. So first let's just adjust the phase. And on this one, I'm going to go to uh, 80, 20 instead of 90, 10. And you'll see here, now we've got a little bit wider band of the white as it ghosts. Next thing we'll do is we'll adjust the color. And the way we're going to do that is pop open the Finale 3D website, go to documentation, BDL documentation. And here we have an article called BDL colors. And we can pop down to red and see that the RGB values are 0 0.95, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So you need to remember that in the absence of a color picker, which we'll be adding hopefully very soon. And we'll go ahead and make adjustments to the color. So let's close down those phases. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this spark tip from white to red. So I'll just go ahead and enter 0.95 for the R, for G, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now since we want the start and end color of the stars to be red, I just enter the same values here. And you'll see as I do this, the color is changing in the simulation. So that looks pretty good. So now we've got our blue to red, and we just need to make some adjustments to the size of the stars, because these stars are pistol stars, so they're a little bit smaller than our outer ring stars. So we'll go ahead and pop open the blue close down the duration and close down the petal for now so you can see just the tip properties for the blue and red and I'm going to reduce the size of these guys just to 2.5 and just a little bit smaller just uh, as a nuanced effect and then I'm going to change the um, the outer ones to being a 10 actually these look pretty good I think we'll go ahead and just and leave these as they are and I think the brightness looks pretty good so then the next thing we need to do is to uh, repeat that process like we did with the outer rings of cloning and then rotating those rings around by adjusting their heading. So we'll go to the pedal in question, which is our, our pedal for the uh, pistol, and we'll copy that pedal to the clipboard. And then we'll go back up to our break, which is the child, or excuse me, the parent node of all the pedals, and add a couple pedals. And now we have our three inner rings. So let's close down these guys. And so now you can see here we have one, two, three. These are our outer rings and then one, two, three for our inner rings. So let's pop open the pedal properties and let's make some adjustments. So remember random group IDs, we want all these pedals to align. So we'll change those to zero so they all match. And then we'll adjust the pedal widths of the second and third ring to 70 meters and 62 meters to make them smaller. So now you can see we've got that donut effect formed by the concentric rings. And then finally, we'll go ahead and spin them around uh, to give them those three segments of ghosting. So similarly to the outside uh, ring here, we'll go ahead and change the heading. So our first one we'll leave alone, our second one we'll change to 120, and the third one we'll change to 240. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, we've created the effect. Let's go ahead and play it through in real time. And there you go. So obviously there's an almost infinite number of other adjustments that you could make to the effect by changing the colors or adding more rings or adding another layer. There's, there's almost anything you could do. So this is just one example of how to make this style of effect. Of course, before you uh, close down the software. You want to make sure to save this effect and the way you save a custom simulation is by clicking the green circle with the white check here and it's letting me know that it's saved and it's offering to update the effect in the show. I'll just click yes and there we go. So now if we watch that effect in our show it looks looks really good. So there it is, and of course we can go ahead and change the name. So I will go ahead and just update the description, 5 inch, and I like to call this, uh, I called it Vortex earlier when I made an example. Of course you can give it any kind of name you want. So it's a blue to white um, ghost ring. 
or something like that. So there you go, updating the show, and we're good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was just a supposed to be quick demo using the effect editor to create an interesting ghosting effect uh, based on a Maltese shell. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.